Hey, good morning. This is Chuck Inglert, Spring Piss and Rifle Fever. I hope everybody's having a great morning and, have, and is having a good, really good weekend. <clears throat> this is going to be like part two of the truth about FPS in your brake barrel air rifles. Uh, five air rifles on test. I'm not going to be testing all those, but I'm going to be talking about FPS, FPE in your rifle. FPS is feet per second. On a pellet and that's going to depend on what pellet you're shooting out of your rifle uh, also what's going to matter is <clears throat> what pellet you're shooting the rifling the shooter the wind the weight of the pellet the pellet there are so many factors that come in uh that cut that that make a difference in how you shoot I'm looking for the right words uh, I'm making this video in response to a Liz Chatfield, and there's other people also that say if your air gun, especially your spring piston rifle, is shooting over 12 foot-pounds of energy, it's going to be unstable and it's going to shoot all over the place. And uh, this Liz Chatfield said that her HW55 was a tack driver and, and that speed is what kills. I corrected this person. I don't know if the Liz is a man or a woman. And I do believe in men and women. I'm not woke. Man has man parts and a woman has woman parts, period. That's all there is to it. Woman makes a baby. Man helps take care of baby. <laughs> but we're not going that direction. So the Liz Chatfield said that her HW55 uh, was a tack driver. I'm sure it is. I'd love to have one. And that the HW95 was just too much. And I try to explain to her that it's not actually spill speed that kills because if you have something that's very light moving through the air, say for instance, like if a leaf hits you and the wind is blowing 30 miles per hour, it's not going to hurt. But if you get hit by a big stone moving 30 miles per hour, that might be something else. <laughs> and she said that, uh, or he... <laughs> She, we don't want any of those, said that a pellet would be unstable with more power behind it. I've been doing some shooting lately, and I just wanted to share some shot groups. Share, here's my 95 Luxus. I have, this is 22 caliber. This is shooting 17 foot-pounds of energy. It's probably very close to being as accurate as my HW77. This has been my number one hunter all winter long. And I really depend on this rifle because it is easy to load. It is extremely accurate. It's powerful. Uh, I like a little bit more power because it has a little flatter trajectory. It's not so loopy. So when you're out hunting, you don't have to think so hard about it. it when I'm hunting, I don't have the opportunity to pull out a rangefinder and say, how far is that cottontail and all this other junk? I already need, I already know where my pellet's going to hit because I've been shooting different targets at different ranges. So getting familiar with your rifle is going to be super important. And also I was thinking this Liz Chatfield speak, or saying that a rifle with more power is going to be all over the place. Well, I just did some shooting also with the RWS 350 Entech Classic. Now, this rifle is shooting between 23 and actually 27, almost 28 foot pounds of energy. I've gotten 28 foot pounds of energy out of this using the uh, <clears throat> Benjamin Destroyer 14.3 grain pellets. But I did a shot group the other day. I don't, I haven't chronied it, but I guarantee you it's getting at least 23, 24 foot pounds of energy with the JSB 1813 grain pellets. So have a look at this. By the way, this is a different phone platform. I was trying to fix my phone and I think I might've accidentally broke it. <laughs> so I'm gonna just share with you I'm not going to measure everything perfect. So this was in my HW77. And 
it was called shooting the HW-77 in the South Dakota hurricane. It's titled something like that. So I'm just going to hold this tape measure up here for you to see what's going on here. So the first shot up high, that was the first one out of the barrel. Right there, that's five shots. And I had one down here. The whole time, this was at 20 yards by the way, the whole time my target was doing this. One guy said, get a weighted, <laughs> get a weighted more solid stand. All right, you know what? I, I'm not worried about getting a weighted solid stand. Maybe someday. This is my shotgun, uh, shotgun, duh. Shot group by the 350, RWS 350 Ntech Classic. So that's another nice small shot group also. I'm just gonna hold this up here for reference. That you can see that it is a pretty small shot group. I think that's five shots right there. Six right outside, one up high. This was also in high wind conditions. There's there's almost no such thing as not high wind conditions in South Dakota. There's a lot being said about pellet stability and speed. You know, one thing I do know is I don't know everything, and neither do you. Some of you out there might be absolute experts in, the, in that area, but I don't see any pellets going sideways through my target. That's real pellet instability, where it corkscrews so much that it's flying sideways through your target. When I was in the Marine Corps and I pulled targets <clears throat> back in the butts, when the shooters went out to 500 yards and they were shooting their M16A2s, Sometimes the it was just like a Bugs Bunny Roadrunner thing where they ran through something and it left the perfect imprint of the Roadrunner or Bugs Bunny going through the object or Wildly Coyote. So the, the bullet actually went sideways right through the target, which was kind of cool looking, but it lost stability. It didn't lose stability because it was going too fast. Actually, it lost stability because it was slowing down at 500 yards and started tumbling. It perhaps could have been a bad uh, bullet made at the factory also. But there's many factors that come into play with your air rifle and shooting. I'm just gonna try to think of a few because the Super Magnum right here, uh, the RWS 350 Antec Classic was shooting really good. You know, that's not bad shooting. That was unsupported outside of my vehicle. Well, not outside, but inside my vehicle, actually. All I had was the rifle resting in my hand, shooting like this. Not, no resting bag under my hand or anything like that. The HW-77, that was actually off a sandbag, but it was extreme wind just like it is today. Um... Uh, so I think a few factors that are going to play into shooting stability is the rifling on your barrel, number one, matching with the right pellet, two, because you can have a bad pellet that will go all over the place, like the, the Benjamin Destroyer pellets. Almost all my rifles hate them. They corkscrew. They literally corkscrew. They, I get shot groups like that big at 20 yards with most of my rifles. They absolutely hate that pellet. So the right pellet with the right rifling, with the right shooter behind it, with uh, everything tightened down, the stock screws and everything tightened down, the scope tightened down right, using the right hold, all of that stuff is really important in your shooting. It's, it's not necessarily if your rifle shoots... Uh, 11 and a half foot pounds of energy that is going to dictate that that's going to be a great shooter. Maybe it'll be, it'll be probably easier to shoot, less jarring, easier to cock, but you know, this one here at 17 foot pounds of energy, this one's, <laughs> this one's easy to cock. That's one finger right there. I won't use any less because I like my rifle. Easy to cock. This is well balanced. This is a nice little hunter here. Um, I don't want a super magnum really out hunting. They're just big and long and hard to handle. 
but I think I covered as much as I can think of covering right now. Uh, been getting lots of good support. I'm getting closer to a thousand. I really hope to break a thousand. Every time I look at my rifle, I see a little more dings and dents in it. That happens. Some people say, well, I wouldn't want one of those rifles because I'd be too afraid of dinging it and denting it. And that happens, unfortunately. I don't like dings and dents in our rifles, but you know what? They're meant to be used. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. Question, comment, like, subscribe. I'm getting close to 1,000 every day. Um, I do have a support system on PayPal. I'd appreciate that too if you could find it in you and you think my channel is worth it. I just want to say God bless you all. You have a great Sunday.